Hello guys, you're welcome back to our class again today. In this particular experiment, we are bringing you the practical electricity practical to verify Ohm's law. The question we are going to be using to do this would be the 2023 wire question 3 for alternative A. Now in this particular experiment, we are provided with an ammeter, as you can see here, a voltmeter, a key or switch, a battery, this is a 3 volt battery, and then a 1 ohm resistor, as you can see here, and a rheostat. This rheostat is just about 50 ohms, and then connecting wires. The diagram is what you're looking at now, and that is how we are going to be able to set up this particular experiment. Now, before we set up this experiment, we are asked to connect this, the battery the terminals of the battery to the voltmeter and in this we are trying to determine the EMF of the battery and then we will note that because eventually we are going to use it. So let me connect the battery to the voltmeter so that we can deduce the EMF. Note that before you start doing your conducting your practical, ensure that you avoid parallax um, zero error in reading the voltmeter. You can see that the pointer is firmly at the zero and also for the amateur both of them are the, so these are simple precautions to take while conducting this experiment the other precautions i'm going to tell you during the experiment proper now let's find out what the emf of the cell is so here are we the cell has been connected to the voltmeter so let us find out what the reading will be um, to give us the emf so let's see here we have our reading to be at 3.35 3.35 we're using the downscale 3.35 volts so this is our emf uh, we're going to record that according to the question v naught and then from here i will now proceed to set up the complete circuit which is the diagram you're seeing on the screen now and then we will follow the procedure and conduct the experiment. Okay, so here is our setup. You can see our connection is according to the drawing. The voltmeter is in parallel. You can see the wires connected in parallel joined to the one ohm resistor and from this end connected to the ammeter. And then it is in series with the battery and also in series with the key and then in series with the one ohm resistor. So now that we have gotten our setup accurate, you can see that the key is open. We are now going to follow the next instruction. And the next instruction, according to the question, is that we should close the key and adjust this rheostat. This is the point where we adjust the rheostat. Once we adjust the rheostat so that we can get a current of 0.3 so anytime our current is 0.3 we'll check the voltmeter region so we adjust the real start to get current of 0.3 in the circuit and then we'll measure what the voltmeter will be reading at that point and record it and then after that we're also going to adjust the real start again and get a current of 0.5 and then also get the corresponding voltmeter reading and record it we'll do that for other values 0 0.7 0 0.9 and um, 1.1 um, amperes and then we'll get the corresponding value of the voltmeter reading and record that then from there we can be able to plot our graph and deduce the slope and solve some other questions that are related to what we want to do so let us uh, let us close the key and adjust the real start to get what we are asked to get so here I'll close the key if we close the key you can see Currently, we have the voltmeter reading and the ammeter reading. The ammeter is reading 0 0.1 approximately. So, I will adjust the rheostat here. See, as I adjust the rheostat, we'll get. So, here I have the current. Okay, it's not there yet. Let's see. So here you can see current is at 0 0.3 here what is the voltmeter reading voltmeter reading is 2.2 2 
2.58 this is not exactly at 6 let's just say 2.58 so here the current 0 0.3 and then 2.58 so here is the real start at the point where it is at the moment so i'll record this i'll unplug the key record this and come back to do the next one okay we are making progress here you can see the ammeter reading to be approximately 0 0.5 it's a little bit um fluctuating but it's at 0 0.5 um, when it was steady and then we have our voltmeter reading to be at 2.1 also at that point let us see sorry sorry so here is it the ammeter reading is at 0 0.5 approximately while this is at 2.1 also approximately let me just use approximate values um and trust that my results will show so this is 0 0.5 approximately and then 2.1 also approximately so let us take down this reading and again go to the next stage all right so here we have i to be 0 0.7 you can see it exactly here and then here we have this to be 1.45 1.45 you can see i 0 0.7 v 1.45 so i will, will record this and then we'll proceed the setup is still pretty much what we have connected you can see so let's record this and proceed all right so okay we'll proceed also to the next one here you can see that our meter reading is at 0 0.9 exactly so our voltmeter reading here is at 0 0.65 0 0.65 exactly also so we are going to note this down 0 0.9 0 0.65 and then we'll proceed to the last one all right, so here is the ammeter reading, 1.1 amperes, and here is the voltmeter reading, 0, 0 0.3 volts. 1.1 amperes, 0 0.3 volts, exactly. 1.1 amperes, here is the ammeter, 1.1 amperes, and then here is 0 0.3 volts. So this is the last reading that we're expected to have. So we are now going to tabulate our reading. Let me move the key. So we are now going to tablate our results and now from there we are going to answer the questions as it is in the experiment stay tuned for the table okay guys so we are through with the experiment and our table has been compiled this is actually what our table is like you can see that our measurements that we got earlier during the experiment had been tabulated accordingly with the initial reading of the voltmeter which we got as 3.35 volt recorded on top of the table to its um, reading accuracy now even the values that were given to us the values of i which were originally given to us as 0 0.3.5 up until 1.1 had also been um, tabulated in the table and the corresponding values of the v which we got from the voltmeter is also captured here to its reading accuracy and then in the question they said that we should evaluate the values of i inverse and g the formula for g according to what was given in the question um, is v over i and all those we can be punched um, using a calculator to just get their values because we had I originally given to us they were not deduced from the experiment so to get I inverse will just be to find one over the value of I which was given to us and then we'll record it remember that for every reciprocal every logarithm and every value in that order we record it to the minimum of three decimal places and then the G which we have as a ratio of V to I remember that the V we got from the experiment as well so when you punch this, our values has also been captured on the table, which you can see here. Now, uh, their units are also recorded alongside in the, in, on the table. Now, we are asked to plot a graph of I inverse on the vertical axis and G on the horizontal axis. And then when we do this, we are going to get a straight line graph. As you can see from the graph here, very neat graph. Our graph is a straight line graph making an intercept with the vertical axis now from this graph we can be able to deduce our um slope now the value of our slope actually 
is very critical because the slope value is meant to correspond with the value of your initial voltmeter reading. So you can see that for mine here, I have my slope to be 0 0.29 per volt. 0 0.29 per volt. Now, if you punch 0 0.29 per volt um, and divide it, you're going to get 3.448 volts. Now, recall that from the experiment, my original value of V is 3.35. So you can see that the value, of course, most times it may not even give you the original standard value because during the conduct of the experiment, there may be um, experimental errors um, and the, due to measurements or reading of the of the voltmeter ammeter or from any other instrument during the conduct of the experiment. So you can see a slight difference for mine is there. So the value I got is 3.448 as against the 3.35 that we recorded earlier on on top of the table. So, but not that notwithstanding, that is my value. And then you can see the slope here. We, we got our slope, which is the uh, ratio of the change in I or the inverse of I to the change in G. And by the time we took our right angle, we, uh, we took our reading from our right angle triangle from the graph um, and computed that we got our values to be 0 0.29 per volt. But they asked us to deduce from the graph the value of V for which G is equal to 2.5. That means we have to revert back to the graph. This time we are going to trace from the graph the, the axis for G, trace it to the slope line, and then find the equivalent value on the I inverse axis. By the time we did that, we got that um, the I inverse from the graph would give us 1.6. But recall, they are not asking us for I inverse. They're asking us for V. But from the value of G given to us earlier on during the experiment, G is equal to V over I. By the time we separate these values together, we have that G is equal to I inverse times V. So by the, now, since we have G and we have I inverse, we will substitute into the formula G is 2.5 given to us standard, and then I inverse, which we measured from the graph, is 1.6 we can now find V from there. So by the time we make V subject formula, we'll get the V to be 1.56 volts. So this is the um, another aspect that may challenge some students. So this is just a breakdown of um, what they asked us to do. Now, apart from this standard for every physics practical, there must be precautions that you took. Remember I told you earlier on that some other practical, I'd already mentioned one, that you must have to avoid zero error in reading the voltmeter and the ammeter. And then for every electricity experiment standard, you must ensure that the connections are tight so that the current can flow through appropriately. Remember that anytime you are not taking the readings, you must have to remove your key. We, we practice this all through the experiment. The keys we are removed when readings are not being taken in order to save and secure the cell from running down. So aside the precaution, we are now asked a question that is very sensitive. They said, a battery of EMF 4.5 volt has a voltmeter connected to its terminal. If the combination is connected in series with a standard resistor and a key, it is observed that the voltmeter reading is less than 4.5 when the key is closed. Explain this observation. Of course, you know that when a battery of EMF 4.5 volts is connected across through a voltmeter and it reads 4.5, that's, that's, that's the EMF of that particular cell. However, any time a component is added to that circuit, Remember that current is going to flow into that particular component. And most of these components, are, they have conductors which offer its own resistance um, to the flow of current, which means that there will be a potential drop. So the result of why the, um, uh, the voltmeter reading is less than 4.5 is because of a potential drop due to the flow of charges from the cell. Now, you know that this potential drop that we are referring to is the voltage difference between the two terminals of a circuit. So for a current to pass through the element, that is the flow of current must have to occur. There has to be a potential or what we refer to as a voltage drop. 
So it can be taught also as the force provided against the resistance or impedance of the circuit to push electrons through it. So this is the reason for the observation, a potential drop occurs as a result of flow of current in the circuit. Finally, an electric device draws 0.50 amperes in a 120 volt circuit. We are asked to calculate the cost of using the device for 24 hours if the rate is $0.25 per kilowatt hour. Now, in this question, we are given current as 0.5 amperes, we are given voltage as 120 volts, and we are given the time taken as 24 hours. The rate is $0.25. I believe that you've been taught work energy power. Electrical power is equal to the energy expended over time, and it means that if we make energy expended a subject, we are going to get power times time. But from the components that we are given, power is equal to IV. Electrical power can be deduced using current times the voltage, which is equal to 120 times 0 0.5 um, amperes. So if we compute that, that will give us 60 watts. Now, therefore, if we substitute into the original formula we have, which is energy is equal to power times time, then that will be 60 watt times 24 hours. Remember, time already had been given as 24 hours. By the time we compute this, we have that energy expended is 1,440 watt hour. But power holding companies, they don't charge um, in watt hour. They charge in kilowatt hour. So we need to convert this 1,440 watt hour to kilowatt hour. And how do we do that? We divide it by 1,000. By the time we divide it by 1,000, we have 1.440 kilowatt hour. Therefore, at this point, we can now deduce the cost. The cost will be the energy that is expended times the rate that is given to you. So the cost for this particular device or using of this device is 1.440 times 0 0.25, which is the cost, which will eventually give us 0 0.25. $36. So you pay $0.36 for using this particular device for 24 hours. So this is all there is in this particular experiment. I'd like that to please make sure that you subscribe to our channels. There are so many videos that we are working on and I believe that they will be of immense help um, to you. Do subscribe, turn on the notification button so that anytime there is a post you will be able to receive it and also help us to share these um, links to your friends so that they can also benefit from from us thank you very much and do have a blessed day